President Garvey, it's so wonderful to be with you. Thank you for hosting us here. Thank you for coming, Monty. As the head of Catholic University for so many years, looking at your tenure at the Catholic University of America, what role does the university play in affecting American culture, and is it significant? I think it's really important. In fact, it may be one of the most important things, uh, co contributors to culture. They, we turn young people into different people over the course of their lives here. It's uh, That four-year span for undergraduates is just life-defining. Aside from their life with their parents, there's nothing else uh, in their lives that uh, is as important to them. And they carry it with them. You know, I go to reunions every year with uh, graduates and people who are 40, 50 years out will still have the same set of commitments, the same ideology, the same uh, ways of religious observance that they had when they were in college. They don't, they, your, your mind gets shaped when you're, when you're that age and it doesn't change much afterwards. So we're turning out future citizens. And as an institution, do people watch, do you think that people watch what the university does, what it stands for very carefully to mirror it in other Catholic institutions? I hope so. <laughs> uh, we're, try we're the National University of the Catholic Church, and so we're trying to set an example for others. We're also, unlike many Catholic colleges that you might think of, um, we're a university. We, we have as nearly as many graduate students as we do undergraduate students, and so we educate the teachers of other Catholic universities. The president of, the most famous president of Notre Dame is a graduate of Catholic University, Father Hesburgh, the current president of Villanova is a graduate of Catholic University. The last president of Providence College was a graduate of Catholic University. So we, uh, we, um, we educate teachers and uh, as well as undergraduates. And many priests and religious as well. Oh gosh, that's, there was a time when they were our only students practically. But <laughs> uh, yes, most of the bishops, uh, most of the cardinals uh, in the United States are graduates of Catholic University. There are some big questions around what this administration is doing to affect universities, specifically with Title IX. Um, the redefinition of sex and how that, defining it rather than as binary, male and female, as sexual orientation and gender identity is pervading through um, the federal system, but also through the culture. How is that affecting universities around, around the world? You know, I think it's a complete um, misdirection. Title IX was enacted shortly after I got out of college, and I think on the whole, it's been a really successful thing in this sense, that our women nowadays um, perform equally with men actually outperform them in <laughs> GPAs and they perform equally in SAT scores. They're better athletes. We have more Olympic gold medal winners who are women. More, So uh, we teach young women, we teach girls and young women growing up that they can be anything, that they can be moms, that they can have jobs, that they can be Supreme Court justices and that's just working fine for them. The Title IX problem today is guys. We're afraid to tell young men this is what a young man ought to be, or this is what you should aspire to, or you should be strong, or you should take care of your family, you, should, uh, you can be president, you can be a gold medal winner. We don't tell our boys that, and so they're lagging behind. And the way to solve it is not to hold the girls back. <laughs> That's been our success. But the way to solve it is to pay attention to our young men in our, in our schools. And uh, the focus on um, transgender issues is, um, you know, driving us down an alley uh, that's really not the main road we ought to be on. This book that you wrote, it's actually a culmination of various lectures that you've given, of a course that you've given. What motivated you really to put this together into a book? Thinking about virtues is a very appealing way of thinking about the moral life for young people. You know, the, the way we usually teach ethics in universities in philosophy courses uh, and the way we talk about the moral life in Sunday sermons or in preaching to uh, to young people is often don't do this don't do that this is bad stay away from this sin or vice or or whatever and that's all useful to say but young people want something to aspire to they mm. want something beautiful they want to make their lives into um, projects that mean something to them. That, uh, and so talking about virtues is a way of looking at the other side of the coin, but it's also a way of saying to people, uh, think about this as a, as a way to live your life. And, and uh, it's, it's a very 
appealing invitation. In the beginning of the book, you diagnose the university experience and the way that universities in the United States run it as having abdicated this uh, very important role that universities used to play in building character for young people mm -hmm. and in stopping that uh, tapestry of moral and intellectual formation. Why is this such an important diagnosis? Uh, there was a period in the middle of the last century and toward the end of the last century when um, what we might call liberal theories governed um, the way we ran universities. And what we told students when they arrived was, look, it's not our job to look out for your uh, virtue or vice for your behavior. We're not going to uh, concern ourselves with that. We're, we're interested in forming your intellect. The culture has actually moved to a point now where we do tell people that they ought to be this and not that. It's a rejection of the liberal ideology, just like uh, my own, but it stresses values uh, or a set of concerns about race, about gender, mm -hmm. about about abortion, uh, about the environment. Um, you should hold these views and not others on these subjects, and if you don't, you're bad. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not improper for them to start thinking what sort of lives should people live and what's good and what's bad. That's the project that I'm engaged in as well. Um, my approach in the virtues is to say, here's a good life to live. It's one that's prudent and just and brave and temperate and faithful and hopeful and loving. Uh, this is the way you want to, isn't this the way you want to be? Not, uh, we don't say, be this or you're, or you're bad. We say, here's an invitation to something that's beautiful. President Garvey, many people fear that that anti-religious fervor can become protected as an ideology than as a religion in the law, that this kind of secular humanism that does have views on everything and imposes itself in society to ask you to be something that is a rejection of something else, what we know as even just the moral beliefs of the church, is that something people should be wary of? What we all understand about religion is that it's something that, in, uh, that has to be um, uh, freely embraced in order for it to be real. Agnostics are as much protected by the free exercise cause as as Unitarians and Catholics and Jews. Uh, so, um, so it is really important that we protect the freedom of people to believe what they will about um, about God and their own lives. The ability to pursue everything you have here, these these virtues allow us to be free in a very different way than the way that the culture tells us that we're supposed to be free. Why is that important for university you know, students I'm, to understand? Uh, I wouldn't use the word free to describe what they enable us to do. I'd rather say, uh, he, um, y using the word free is a kind of reversion to liberal theory. Mm. It takes us back to saying we ought to be able to do what we want to do. I'd rather say that um, acting on the virtues or adopting or practicing the virtues that I speak about in my book allows you to develop a kind of character that makes you a good person. Mm. The virtues uh, are, are ways of acting that we think are particularly appropriate for human beings because this is a good way for men and women to live. That's, um, so a good rather than free uh, is the way I would put it. And there is actually this this real difference between those two ways of thinking, that uh, calling that freedom is an adoption of liberal theory, and freedom could be any sort of choice. Good suggests that, uh, that this is a way to act, and other ways are not as good as this is. Other ways might be as free as this, but not as good. Thank you so much, Thank President you. Garvey, for this, for your reflections, and for your leadership. Thank you, Monty. President Garvey has more to say on Title IX. You can watch that in a previous interview I did with him on the EWTN YouTube page. Here's wishing former President Garvey continued blessings on his future endeavors.